It's okay. Okay. Now, see if there's a button is, is available. Okay. Okay, we're live. Okay. Exciting. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, see, next next month you'll be that much wiser. <laughs> Sorry about that. I should have right. told you it was so weird. It's so weird. Do we get straight into it? Will I set the trailer yes. or will we get straight into it? Uh, no, yeah, let's just get straight into it. I'm just going to open it up so I can see what's going on in YouTube <clears throat> and make sure. Okay, not that. Let's go see. Volition. Right. Okay. All right. Yes. Wow. People are already hanging out in the in the chat and having a good time. That's nice. I'm just gonna mute. Click play. Great. Okay. Perfect. All right. Hello, everyone. Apologies for the delay there. Um, we were working through some technical issues in the back end, and every time we do this, we learn a little bit more. So we've now added notes to our repertoire of what to do, what not to do. And um, we really appreciate your patience and hanging out in the chat and talking to each other and getting to know each woman's pitch. I am Melody Ewan. I'm one of the co-founders and managing partners at Volition, and I'll be one of the hosts here today. Our other host here today is Isabel Nolan. Would you like to say hello? Hello, I'm Isabel, I'm the Community Events Coordinator for Volition. Thank you so much for joining us today. All right, I see some people saying in the chat that there's some sound issues. Oh, you had it loaded twice. All right. <laughs> well, at least we're not the only ones having technical issues. <laughs> um, all right, so I wanted to <clears throat> um, welcome you, of course. And if you have not met us before, we are Volition. So we build capacity and connectivity and knowledge within startup ecosystems. And we do this through three different ways. One is through partner programs. So that looks like um, boot camps and workshops that we put on with incredible partners that we have um, across North America, in Europe, in Africa, and different areas of the world. We also do one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, and we have uh, 10 incredible, actually is expanding now, we have 13 incredible um, advisors who all specialize in something different from early, helping early stage startups to growth stage, whether you're um, preparing for an investor round um, or you're going I want to get market ready or kind of like all the different things around sales and customer success and many, many different things. So if you're interested in that, please do reach out at any time. And of course we have our community events and this is our sixth Amplify of 2021. It is our 109th, I think. 108th. 108th pitch event overall since 2016. Um, and we already, oh, it says we're right there on the slide. <laughs> um, and we've had uh, over 6,000 audience members such as yourselves and are so excited to have you all here today celebrating incredible women from all around the globe who are joining us. Um, I think at this point in time, I also wanted to, before we get too much into this, um, encourage, of course, everyone to, to hang out on YouTube chat and Isabel's gonna get into that a little bit more in just a moment. Um, but before we dig in, we do want to acknowledge that Volition and as well as myself and Isabel and many of those on our team, um, <clears throat> uh, we would like to acknowledge that Volition was founded on the unceded ancestral territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, Squamish and Tsleil-Waututh nations. Mm -hmm. We acknowledge our traditional hosts and extend our gratitude um, for the graciousness and welcoming, welcoming us to carry on our work on this land. Things are happening with our deck. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> um, I'd also like to thank our generous sponsor, Pivot and Pilot Creative. Um, they help uh, they help food, beauty, and wellness brands stand out and capitalize on their first impression through branding, e-commerce solutions, and uh, through packaging design. And they actually helped us with our rebranding in 2020, which we were great, very grateful for. They were fantastic to work with. Um, they're also going to be one of the prize sponsors for today's pitch event. So um, my many, many thanks to Pivot and Pilot. You can learn more about them at pivotandpilot.com or on any of the socials at Pivot and Pilot. Over to you, Isabel. 
Perfect. So uh, what to expect with today? So we're taking you through some of the um, prize sponsors and sponsors of today's event, as well as we'll be introducing you to our wonderful panelists. Um, and then we'll get straight into the pitches. So we've got six wonderful pitchers joining us today, um, all from North America. Um, some is joining in from Australia and then also from Uganda as well. Um, so we're very excited to hear all of those pitches. Um, after all the pitches, we will be doing an audience uh, vote for the top pitch and um, so more details on how you can do that uh, in a moment and um, we also will be doing a 60 minute uh, or a 60 second uh, spotlight on um, another organization that we're very excited to share what they're doing uh, with the world um, and we will then wrap it up with announcing our top pitch and um, that will sort of be what the next hour and a half will look like for you. So ways to connect. So firstly, get into the YouTube chat, cheer on each other. Um, this is your place where you can connect with each other. Um, also provide feedback if, if you know you want to give your feedback on a pitch that you watch. Um, you can put it in here. We'll be putting all of the pitchers' contact details in there as well. So if you want to connect with them afterwards, um, there'll be various ways to do that. Um, and then also Buzz It. So Buzz It is um, a partner of ours. They're actually pitch alumni. We've been using them for a little over two years now. Um, so Buzz It, uh, we use Buzz It at all of our pitch events um, to give everybody the ability to discover, interact and connect with each other before, during and after the event. Um, so this is a place where you can go and um, you can go to buzzit.ca or you can also see this little QR code that I have there. Um, enter Amplify Women and you can connect with the pitchers, see our, who our sponsors are. Um, and that's also where you'll be voting as well. And for Volition, if you want to connect with us, we are on all the socials as well. Um, at this is Volition on Instagram and Twitter. Um, Sabrina, our digital marketing manager, and Gabby um, will also be on Instagram and, and Twitter, live tweeting everything as well. Um, if you want to get in on that action, you can use the hashtag Amplify Women's Pitch. Um, and we are also obviously on YouTube. Um, so if you haven't already, do hit the subscribe button. Um, we've got a bunch of other things here. We've got all of our other amplifiers um, on here as well as um, uh, Instagram or yeah, our IG Live founder chats um, that Melanie hosts every Tuesday. And there's tons of nuggets of gold in there. Um, just picking the brains of different founders in our, uh, in our community um, and their sort of success journey to, um, or rather journey to um, entrepreneurship. As Isabel just mentioned, we do have um, a top pitch um, voting at the end. So our top pitch reward, awards here today come to you from, as I mentioned, Pivot and Pilot Creative, who are gonna bring you brand strategy session and marketing SWOT analysis. We also have our friends over at Flick and Resurgo who are doing, um, who are providing an incredible offer to our top pitch. One free year of membership to Flick. Um, which is an incredible community of um, women professionals, as well as um, people that they are connecting with. Minutes of one on one support session and a free membership with circle.co uh, as well. And again, that's a, a community for professional women. And they do some really incredible work um, supporting women who are experiencing burnout and things around mental health, but also just um, advancing in your career as well. Um, in terms of what we're providing here at Volition, you're going to get one of those IG live interviews um, and our blog features. As Bill just mentioned, that's every Tuesday that we have those. And we're actually booked up until September for IG live interviews. So if you're top pitch, it will be in September that will be your, your slot. But we also have blog features and startup stories that our um, digital marketing manager pulls together. Sabrina, she's incredible. Um, and then you would also get an advisory session with one of the managing partners, that's myself or Paul, who is in the chat on YouTube here today, hanging out there. So make sure to say hi to Paul. Um, and those are our top pitch rewards for today's Amplify event. Oh, sorry, <laughs> Isabel, <laughs> forgot who was doing this. Um, alrighty, <laughs> so we'd like to introduce you at this time to your feedback panel. We have ten, two women joining us here today. Um, we have Anne, and I didn't actually double check how to say, to pronounce your last name. Um, Kukiet, Kukiet, am I butchering this? You got it. <laughs> oh, fantastic. The founder and CEO of our friends over at Guild, and you are down in, are you in California or are you? 
Where no, we just moved to Oregon, Hood River, Oregon, to a blueberry right. farm. So that's okay. my new home. That's your new home. So what, let's talk to you first and learn a little bit about you, and then we'll head over to Shay. Awesome. Yeah, welcome, everybody. Hey, I'm super excited to be here with you. It's my second time as somebody on the feedback panel. And I'm um, happy to tell you a little bit about myself. So I'm a startup lover. I have done a few startups myself. I've sold one. I've also acquired one and I'm doing one right now. And in that startup, I also launched an accelerator program that helps first time female entrepreneurs launch their startup Silicon Valley style. And so that's kind of like the big program we've been running over the last 18 months. In that program, you'll learn all the things you need to know and hopefully not the hard way, but the easy way, just like Volition helps you create a wonderful pitch and strategy for your startup as well. We do that for early, early stage founders. So if you're in the audience and you're thinking about starting a business, check out the Guild Academy. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn as well. I do a little bit of angel investing on the side as well, but it's not my main thing. And I do judge a lot of startup competition from the European startup ecosystems that help entrepreneurs also come to the United States for the German Accelerator, for the Belgium Chamber of Commerce, also for Swiss Next and for a few others. So if you have any questions about go-to-market strategies or you know how to even take the first step in creating your dream business, talk to me. I'd be happy to connect and uh, give you my advice. And uh, Melanie and Isabel, I hope it's okay to throw one other price in. If you win today, I would love to gift you a full year Guild Pro membership, which means you get access to all our resources as well. So you have even more, you know, to, to kind of get you to the point where you get funding and you get your business off the ground. So really looking forward to the pitches and over to you. Awesome, thank you. We will not say no to that prize. Thank you so much, <laughs> Anne. <laughs> Um, and Shay, I'd like to welcome you to the virtual stage now, Shay Hardy, joining us from, I believe you're still in Amsterdam? You got it. Amsterdam, yes. And we met back in 2018, I think it was for the first time at the Wit Regatta. Um, and Shay has been an incredible supporter of Volition. And we love, love, love having her here at our pitch events um, and hoping to do more work with um, the incredible or like everything that you're doing over there as well um, in the future. So I'll pass it to you to say hello. There's so much more, so much, not much more to add to that <laughs> introduction. Um, I, uh, I am a, I'm, I'm, on, no, I'm an entrepreneur, entrepreneur. I help women who are starting their own business and shift their mindset from, sorry about that, help them shift their mindsets from employee to entrepreneur to basically being a boss and help them start thinking about and organizing their business when they're first starting out. So from ideation to the foundation of their business. I also do a lot of work with women in tech and women in science. I've started a community called Winnovate and it's a, it's a platform based community for women who work in STEM. Our objective is to get more women at the decision-making table, whether it's through coaching, mentorship, and ideally to open up doors and create sponsorship so that you're in the decision-making table, at the decision-making table, helping to make impact. I think that's about it. Amazing, yes. Thank you so much, Shay. I'm so excited to have you both here today. Um, all right, so with no further ado, we actually have six pictures here today. Usually it's five, but we had a very large, we had over 20 um, people apply to this event actually, and they were all incredible. And so we did our best to, um, to provide this stage to as many as possible, but I'm really excited to introduce them to you here today. Isabel is gonna be introducing each of the pitchers to the stage. So pitchers, once you're invited to the stage and there's been a little hello and how are you um, introduction of you, just uh, share your screen and take a deep breath and begin your pitch. Um, and you can see most of the pictures on screen here now. We actually have one more who's joining us from Australia, but it is very early in the morning right now. So she's gonna be joining us just a touch later. Um, but you can see most of the pictures on the screen here today. So pictures, we can see you. Say hello, say hello. I see one of the, another one of the screens coming on. There we go. <laughs> Amazing. All right, so I'll pass this to you, Isabel, if you would like to um, invite up our first picture. 
Wonderful. Yes. So picture number one, we have Nadia Ladak, um, who is the co-founder and COO of Marlowe. And um, so while she's getting her deck up on screen, um, just a little bit of news um, to share. They have raised 500k so far of their pre-seed round and they're gearing up to uh, launch their product, the lubricated tampon kit, by the beginning of September. So welcome. Awesome. Thank you, Isabel. Thank you, Melanie. And, and thank you to the whole Volition team for organizing today's event. I'm super excited to be here. Um, my name is Nadia. I'm the co-founder and COO here at Marlowe. And we are empowering menstruators with the products and education that they deserve. It all started when one of my co-founders shared that she has immense pain when inserting a tampon. And she is a competitive swimmer, she's an athlete, she's always on the go. And she shared that when she's on her period, she's unable to participate in her sport. She's unable to do the active things that she likes to do because tampons are just so painful to insert. And her only alternative is to use a pad, which is bulky, it's uncomfortable, it essentially feels like a diaper. And so she is really limited during that time. We spoke to over hundreds of customers and we found that 86% of them also experienced some kind of insertion pain or discomfort, whether that be because of general anxiety, because of vaginal dryness, maybe they were approaching menopause, they could have a lighter flow at the beginning or end of their period, or even because they were on birth control, or maybe they had a medical condition such as vaginismus. As we were conducting these interviews, we also found that there was a second problem, which was the fear of running out of product. It is the worst feeling in the world to have almost get your period, forget to restock, you find out you only have one tampon left and you have to make an emergency trip to the drugstore. And so we're really innovating on our business model to make it direct to consumer and make sure that you never run out of your product. And so our solution is the first lubricated tampon kit. It has 100% organic cotton tampons and an all natural personal lubricant. We've engineered the bottle so that when you dip your tampon in, it perfectly coats it with every dip to make it a smooth insertion process and make sure that it's really mess-free. When you dip it into the bottle, it scrapes off any excess lubricant with our cross slit valve to make sure that you're not doing arts and crafts in the bathroom stall. But we won't stop there. Marlo will be a one-stop shop for all things sexual wellness. We have other plans to roll out products related to pain management. So a CBD infused tampon that will ease cramps, a more sustainable product. We know that's a core value for all of us as founders, as well as of a lot of our customers. So experimenting with seaweed based plastic to ultimately be the best sexual health brand out there. Our traction so far, we've got $13,000 in pre-sales in under three weeks. We've raised $475,000 in capital through space, which has been really exciting. And a big part of our mission as well is to reduce the stigma around menstrual health. Growing up, there wasn't a great resource out there. You had to either look from the American Girl Book or you had to like dig through the internet. And so we want to be a reliable source out there for all content to learn about these topics and for individuals to ask the questions they've always wanted to know the answers to. 30 seconds. Our business model will be direct to consumer through e-commerce. For the customer, it solves that pain point of the fear of running out of product. And for us, it results in recurring revenue. We're able to collect data and analytics to deeply understand our customers and really create that feedback loop with them. It's a huge market valued at over $50 billion. Over 50% 50 of the population will menstruate at some point in time. And a subset of this target market are people with vaginal dryness, which one in six people experience. And so to end off on our team, we've all graduated from the Ivy Business School here in Canada. We have experience ranging from strategy consulting to branding and marketing, but truly our biggest strength is that we understand our customer inside and out. We are the target market and we're building the brand we've always wanted to see. And so we're launching our product in September. Feel free to follow along at We Are Marlo. Um, we'd love to kind of keep you in the loop and for you to join our community. Nicely done. Very nicely done, Nadia. And I want to mention that Nadia is joining us here today from Toronto, Ontario. Um, I think maybe our only Canadian company here today. I can't, yeah, 100% recall right now, but welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, and great job. So, uh, Shay and Anne, let me pull up my screen here so I can see you. If we can pull down the slides at this time so we can see our. Uh, feedback panelists and you can stay on as well um there so and you are off mute which means i'm going to jump over to you first <laughs> all right well first of all nadia congrats this was a fantastic pitch i loved your visuals i loved the story and 
and how you went through the pitch. You sped up at the end a little bit there, I think, because time was running out. And so the only feedback I have for you is you spent a lot of time on the problem, right? And that is typical for a company that hasn't really launched into the market yet. And it is also a good thing if you're pitching, especially an audience that is mostly male people who may not understand the problem really well. So I would say you could, if you know your audience is mostly a female, um, you know, shorten that a little bit and then really emphasize the traction you have, which is already pretty awesome. I love to see that traction. I love to see that you saw you already built a big community. And then I would really try to bring in sort of that go to market. I know you, you put in the opportunities in this pitch. So it's not just a tampon, it's a big sexual health brand that you want to build. And that's the big vision. So I think that's good to have that, but perhaps tell me more about how you think about bringing that product to market right now. Is it going to be, you know, you said pre-sales. I didn't know where that was on your website or did you do like a Kickstarter type of thing or crowdfunding? So, so a little bit more detail around that would have been amazing just to see, you know, how you get um, the product and the word out there and, and how you think about that as well, especially with a product, it's kind of like an unmentionable, we call that right in the, in the sexual wellness and women's health world. And then, um, and then loved the team, but it was a really fast one, right? So I think you have a really pretty good team for the stage where you're at. And that is something to be really proud of. So I would really spend a lot of time on the team and tell people why you are the right people to bring this product to market. Um, and, and then maybe a little bit about the financial forecast. I would have loved to see a few numbers if there's an investor pitch, right? I want to see the opportunity. How much does it cost? Now it's a tampon and the bottle. So it's, it's more cost probably for you to produce. And then um, wanted to see the competition perhaps as well. Like products like Cora have been quite uh, successful for a few five, six years, right? Also with the organic cotton, not so much with the lubricant, but would have loved to just see how you think about it and where you see your, your brand in the competitive landscape. But great job, wonderful branding and wonderful visuals. Thank you so much, Anne. Very comprehensive feedback. Shay, are there any gaps there? <laughs> Really, not a lot of gaps there. And I think just when I thought I was going to add something, she mentioned competition in the financial report. So I was like, oh, nope, that's it. Um, there's there. I do want to commend you on uh, adding humor to it. it. I I was not. I was muted, so you couldn't hear me. Almost spit out my water when you said the art thing. I was like, oh my god, that's. I think that's also a woman humor thing. So. Maybe that's uh, like um, Anne said, if you're talking to men, maybe find a different, but I would say keep it in. I, I thought that was hilarious. Um, I love the part about the education. Um, I What I missed too, when we're talking about the competition is where you fit in the market because there are other companies that are looking to make this, make menstruating a bit easier or less messy or even reusing things. So I wasn't sure where you see yourself in the market. So I was missing that. Um, the financials, of course. And what was your ask? I wasn't, are you asking for more money? Are you asking for more network? Are you asking for, um, maybe it was there and I missed it, but I know we're pushed for time. So I, maybe I missed it. Well, the other thing I missed, and it could be because it went by me fast, but what, what is the solution for when it run, when you're about to run out? I didn't because it's still the tampon, but I didn't. So what's this? How are we? How am I not running out of it? I didn't understand that part. Maybe it was there, so I don't. I was paying attention to everything and writing writing notes, so I might have missed it. But maybe if you could explain a little bit further, what that was, and that that was it. I thought you did a really great job. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think that you you'd mentioned like we are going to be addressing that. Um, and taking measures to be direct to consumer or to make it easier for consumers. But, but yeah, I, li I like that idea of like, like, how is this a subscription box? Is like, is there like an, like a notification on my phone that reminds me to order some? Like, so it's, um, I, yeah, I think that's really interesting and, like, and appreciate the point. What I love is that I'm seeing so many more companies like yourself that are tackling various issues around um, women's health and around periods. And so this competition that's coming up with Anna Shea is real, but it's also 
so fantastic to see. And I hadn't seen one that has a lubricating piece to it. So I think that's really cool. Um, I was like, oh, what? That's interesting. So, and I love that you had the picture on there. So thank you so much, Anne and Shay and Nadia. Um, what can we as your audience do to amplify the work that you're doing? So I think the first would be to follow along with our community. We're launching our product in September. So following along at, at We Are Marlo on Instagram or Twitter, um, as well as we're looking for marketing and branding advisors to help us with our launch. I know it's hard to fit everything into a three minute pitch, but I'm happy to kind of expand on, on some of the questions, I guess, later or, or um, after the competition as well. So thank you both for your feedback is really helpful. Nice. Thank you. You can always head over to uh, YouTube and answer some of those questions there because I'm sure that people in the audience would be like would like to hear and there's lots of people in the audience right now going wow this is amazing so fantastic. So you have a great audience um, supporting you there so make sure to go check in on them um, say hello. Thank you so much Nadia I've lost my um, my phone disappeared so I don't have all the details is built you could share um, beyond what Nadia just said in terms of where people can follow them. And I'll get yes. my phone back. <laughs> no worries. So yeah, you can head to their website, wearemarlo.com, and you can follow them on Instagram at wearemarlo, and they're also on LinkedIn at wearemarlo as well. So give them a follow easy, on all the things. Fantastic. <laughs> Alrighty, let's bring up our second picture then. All right. So picture number two. Uh, we'll just have her start her. Ooh. Sorry, I need her other word. So picture number two is um, Adonica Shaw. She is the founder and CEO of Wing Woman and she is joining us from California, USA. And some um, exciting news um, from Adonica is that she's written her first article for TechCrunch last week um, on 10 ways founders can manage their mental health while fundraising. Amazing, love it, love it, love it. We should share that, share that in the- It's in on the our YouTube. newsletter. Fantastic. Yep. <laughs> All right, welcome, Adonka. You're on mute. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Thank you so much for having me. As she mentioned, I am the founder and CEO of Wing Women. Uh, for those of you who want to open it in another tab, you can follow along at www.mywingwomen.com. Uh, Wing Women is a social media network that provides access to healthcare information and health advice to women for um, the use of their health and wellness needs. Um, I have coined it social wellness at your fingertips. And so to walk you through here, there we go. Uh, the reason this platform came about because I identified a problem and really it's a problem for a few different groups of people. So let's start with the personas. Over here to my left, we've got wing women. These essentially are women in the workforce. Um, for the sake of this conversation, I'm gonna call them Tiffany, Jocelyn, Jackie. They are exceptional women. They are out there breaking glass ceilings. They're ambitious, they're career driven, but they also know that they want to manage their health and wellness in a way that is destigmatized effective and a way for them to get information that they may not want to go through traditional route to get. And then there's Jeff. Jeff would be a company CEO. He could be a kingmaker, but for this conversation, we'll say a queen maker, simply somebody who's in a position of leadership to make sure that women like Tiffany, Jocelyn, Jackie have access to care, whether through his direct environment and his work, or if perhaps he sits on a board and he says, you know what, we know that we're an all male led um, enterprise or company board of directors, what have you. And we wanna make sure that she feels supported in this environment. We need a solution to make sure that she's got um, some type of access to a team of people and other women that may get her as she joins this board, particularly if her stress level goes up. And then there are people like Sarah and Nick. Um, generally speaking, I'm going to say that they are healthcare professionals. They could be travel nurses. They could be therapists. They could be just people who are credentialed and licensed and generally excited um, about helping people like Tiffany, Joss, and Jackie make sure that they achieve their health and wellness needs. So um, my solution is actually a B2C and B2B platform, which allows all three different user types to engage in an environment. So the way this works is that 
Um, if you look over here all the way up in the corner, you can see Jeff, he pays a price per user. And so that would range anywhere from $25 to $45 a month for whomever he wants to provide access to the platform. And then there are the wing women that are down there at the bottom. They can access our health topic areas. They can also explore the areas on the back end of the platform where they can meet with other lateral women and discuss all things health and wellness and self-care. They get to use the platform for free. Um, but the coolest part about this is that they get to connect with people who are healthcare professionals, who are our weak women experts and pay a monthly subscription. Now, if they happen to find really good actionable advice, they can then provide micro payments to these healthcare professionals. So the coolest part about this is that there is a healthcare gig economy right there in the platform. Now, exactly. the benefit of this is that for all of those questions that women may have that they don't have a network to go to, may be too embarrassed to discuss in front of friends or family or in their lateral network, they can hop on our platform and post to the timeline, just like you would with Facebook or even Instagram, with or without their name. That extra cloak of anonymity protects their reputation. They can ask things like, hey, let's connect in real life. I'm pregnant, now what do I do? Um, or for their questions to healthcare providers, they can ask, hey, are you taking new clients? I could definitely use more of your support. Now the stats, the information everybody wants to know. In terms of traction, we're in our beta MVP stage. We are pre-revenue. Um, to date, I have invested about $35,000 into the platform and I've received a $300,000 software grant um, maybe a few months back. And we have several partnerships coming up in the fall and we're currently A-B testing marketing campaigns. Um, aside from that, we are focused on our user acquisition strategy, user education strategy, right? Because once we get all of these wonderful women on the platform, we have to show them how to use it. Um, and then currently, in terms of the growth of the platform, I was accepted into the Wharton Growth Accelerator, which I'm currently participating in. And then the fall was accepted into the MIT Harvard Medical um, Innovation Program where I will be exploring and developing this platform and the concept of social wellness even further. Adonica, I'm sorry to cut you off. If you could get to your ask, that would be oh. great. You're just at three minutes, 30 seconds. Okay, so that actually concludes my presentation. Um, right now I am seeking advisors and angel investment in small dollar checks. Um, I am just very passionate about making sure that women around the world that are in the workforce have access to health care or health advice, whether or not they have insurance. Um, and in terms of the small dollar investment, that would go a long way in terms of helping me to bring on additional consultants and helpers to alleviate some of my time so that I can enter a formal raise um, in a formal round this fall. Oh, amazing. I can, I can tell that this is not your first time pitching or I assume it's not your first time pitching. Is it? <laughs> well, I've, I've done a few pitch competitions. This is like my fourth one. Yeah, no, you have like a really comfortable way about you and talking about your business. It was really a joy to watch. So thank you so much for that. Thank you. Um, this time I'm gonna head over to Shay first. Uh, great pitch. Um, what I was so in intrigued with the conversation. I didn't even take that many notes. So <laughs> <laughs> usually I'm busy writing and, and also listening. Um, the, the thing I miss is your market layout, um, where you see yourself in the market, who's your competitors, or and maybe even where you want to be in the market. I But I get that where you are right now, you're still... Yes, we're still early stage. Um, I think what's really interesting about the platform is that there isn't technically a direct competitor given the gig economy component, but well, in terms of- Unfortunately, Adonica, we don't have time for- Sorry. Answering of the feedback. No, sorry, I apologize sorry. for that, but please do again, get into the chat and, and explain away. Sorry, Shay, Adonica. Sorry. Uh, all the things. <laughs> My apologies. Um, about the gig econ uh, economy, I think that's a great user uh, USP. I think that it makes it very valuable. I think being able to connect, I think the whole concept is great, to be honest. I, I think this is such a really cool concept. I liked how you showed the the um, personas, who so I know who you're targeting and also what they get from it. 
So that I thought that was really clear. Um, and the pro everything was great, to be honest. There were things missing, but I realized it's also because of where you're you're at with financing and and what is how much money do you need and those things. So um, I think you're off to a great start. So good Thank luck. Thank you. Thank you, Shay. Over to you, Anne. All right. Okay. So since it's easy to get all the good feedback here, I'm going to be the, the German judge <laughs> and give you a little bit of a tough love here. Um, so uh, persona is great, right? To understand who is this for. There's three personas and then your product slide went right into mixing the business model with what you're actually offering. So I was con confused. I was like, okay, is she a gig economy type of you know, Upwork for, for healthcare professionals? Is she a, a employee benefit type of platform? Is she a direct to consumer um, health and wellness place? And so you kind of lost me there as an investor, right? Because I'm like, okay, she's, she's doing too many things at the same time in the beginning. So I would highly, highly recommend to focus on one area and to say, hey, you know, this is where we go first. We go B2C first. We're going to see the results. We're going to see what this does for women. They will love it. And then we're going to send them to their employers and say, okay, look, there's a great platform. You need this for us all here in this community because we need women because, you know, diversity inclusion is important to you. So I would say go step by step. Don't mesh everything together. I totally get it. I'm the same kind of founder where I'm like, no, this is a global vision. And, you know, we need to get everybody on board at the same time but, you know, be methodical and then also tell us, you know, what does that gig economy, the numbers look like? Like, how is that going to be a huge business? Yes, I get it. There's a need, but how are we going to make money here? It's really hard to get people to pay anything on these kinds of platforms because there's so much out there, right? So tell us what you've seen in your, in your research so far and who pays for what. And perhaps it is a freemium model and then there is a gig economy type of thing and you take a cut. But I want to see how you think about it as an investor, especially because of your ask at the end where you said, okay, I'm looking for angel investors. So the investment piece and the business opportunity piece was a little bit missing. And so what you did, you, you did like a perfect consumer marketing pitch, right? If you're talking to me as a wing woman or as a wingman or as a company, I kind of get it. But a marketing pitch is a different pitch than an investor pitch. And so it really depends on your ask at the end, what you want to get out of it to kind of put those things in place and also show me the points where I know this solution is really working compared to all the other very crowded space and solutions that are out there um, to, to make the the workplace and us all a little bit healthier, right? So, but, but other than that, congrats. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I took notes. Thank you so much for your feedback. I appreciate it. Yes, and thank you for taking notes as well. Um, it's amazing to see people do that. And also this will be live on YouTube afterwards. So you can always go back and, and listen to the feedback afterwards. There's also people in the chat, Adonica, who are, who are providing feedback there as well, asking about the team, um, providing you kudos. Um, you have that as I was mentioning, you are already a fantastic presenter, which is such a hurdle to get over for so many. So you have that. So just incorporating all the things. Thank you. <laughs> um, great job. So um, what was the last thing? I was actually gonna mention very quickly one other thing, which is your final slide. I would love to see your contact information on that. Cause especially in a situation where it's Q and A and that's the last slide that's up there. I would love to see like, what is your ask, that one big ask, and what is your contact information so that if you say something jerk during Q&A that triggers me, um, oh yeah, actually I can help her with that, then I know where to get in touch with you. So that was my, my final piece I wanted to also add in there. Um, aside from that though, what, what can we do um, as your community to support you? Uh, so I've received, <laughs> I'm digesting everybody's feedback already. Um, I think right now, obviously, pushing this concept of social wellness out there. Um, I think last year, the pandemic really highlighted the need to have a network of people around you that had solid information as it related to health, mental health, and wellness. And so um, in the recognition of that last year, I was like, oh, all of my friends can't just go pop over and get in with the therapist. And so that means cultivating this concept so that the people in your network are all jointly um, 
educated around certain topics that you guys might all need one day. So that's my ask just to push this concept out there. And obviously if you feel like you could be a wing women yourself or be in that, that group of ceiling breakers, go ahead and join us online. Fantastic. And if you're interested, you can join wing women at mywingwoman.com also on Twitter um, at T wing women and on Instagram at Adonica Shaw. So go um, like and share and all the things to get this message out and get this business um, getting more views and in front of more communities. So thank you so much, Adonica. I really appreciate you being here. Isabel, let's invite up our third pitcher. Alrighty, so pitcher number three is Elizabeth Dell. She is the founder and CEO of Amaris and she is joining us from California, USA. So some news to share while she's getting her slides up. Um, they've just launched out of beta with 200 over 200 users and with uh, about 8,500 messages already sent. So welcome to the stage. You are on mute. Just, yep. yep. <laughs> Took me a second for the unmute button. Sorry about that, everyone. Great. Thank you so much for having me. I am really, really excited to share today. So uh, without further ado, I'm Elizabeth, a founder of Amorous, uh, the sexy chat for intimate partners. So I know asking a question is really a bad idea on a webinar, but how many of you are sexters? Oh, hang on. The secret is almost all of you, more than 80% of adults use their phone for sexual communication. At the same time, however, almost half of them have some discomfort with that. There are unicorn apps out there in the world that facilitate our meditation, our shopping, our trail running, but not our closest relationships until Amorous. We make your sexting more private, more engaged, and more inspired. What does that mean? It means we know what you want to share and we protect it. It means we have tools and emojis that help with things like boundaries, negotiation, aftercare, consent, all of the things you wish you were taught in high school sex ed. And it means that once we have that, we can make your sexual engagement more inspired and delicious. We have games that will help you discover shared fantasies or start new sexy conversations. You can always send a picture to your, to your boo but why not send it as a puzzle and make them just work a little harder before they get to see the good stuff? Amorous is a native iOS and Android app and our world looks honestly like SMS text or if you're a European, it looks like WhatsApp. If you're Asian, it looks like WeChat. The majority of this is happening in the same stream as you are having your video chat with grandma or you're sharing your travel pictures or you're getting your work notifications. Um, Discovery is actually something that's more available to singles who have dating apps or there's Instagram and Snapchat for friends. The partner slice is smaller, but there are some new apps on the horizon. They tend to live in the worlds of either couples therapy in an app or logistics, sort of helping you remember your anniversary and the best gift to get your partner. But this is a multi-billion dollar market. Adults who are opted into their sexuality are more than 34 million people in the US alone. So how's it going? We launched our beta with full App Store and Google Play approval back in April. We had hoped to be at 200 users by the fall. We are actually already at more than 200 users and over 8,500 messages sent on the app in six weeks. Over the next 18 months, we wanna develop and improve our product market fit and get to 50,000 users with security enhancements, building out our monetization for premium subscriptions and for brand integrations with at least a game a quarter. We're looking to raise $750,000 to get us there. That's with this breakdown. And this is the team that's getting it done. I'm a film producer. I've made movies like Destination Wedding with Keanu Reeves and Winona Ryder. I'm a serial entrepreneur and I'm a certified sex educator with a master's in public health from UC Berkeley. My lead engineer and co-founder Val Zinchenko has built over 200 mobile apps and runs our overseas team. And then we have a really diverse and femme forward team putting Amorous together. 
Um, we're so excited to have you on the journey. Thank you so much. I love the businesses that women are making today <laughs> and the, the conversations that we get to have. They're just so fun. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, for being here and sharing about Amaris. Um, all right, I'm gonna go over to you and West Coast, you're over there as well. Let's bring you in. Awesome. Well, congrats, Elizabeth. Great pitch. Loved your slides, the story, how you told the story as well. And, you know, there was time spent on each piece of it. So not like too much on one side or another. I also love that you really brought in the brand, right? Because this is a dark to consumer type of brand. So branding is really important. And I think it is important to bring that through in your pitch. And I love the way that you showed pictures too of your app and the wireframe. So I actually know what it, what it's what it's all about, right? Um, so uh, I know you're raising 750, right? I loved also the fact that you broke it down into what you want to use it for. Now my big question is again around marketing. You know, how are you going to make those 200 users, 50,000 users, and how do you think about? getting the word out there. And I think that's a really important question to see if this hockey stick growth that you show us that you hope to achieve is actually going to happen. So I would love to see if you have, you know, a product marketing type of person or expert on your team, or if there's something built into the app that other people can share it with their friends or, or whatnot, right? And I would love to see how you think about the go-to-market and really making this go big. So I didn't see that expertise on your team just yet. And I had not enough time to really see if that's something where you want to invest those 750 in, right? But I'd, I'd love to see, you know, um, there's a lot of dating apps out there, for instance, that, that cracked a few nuts there in the past, but also a lot that did never get off the ground. And so that would be my big hesitation to, to go and, and invest in the company to say, okay, I want to see how she's going to make that happen and with what approach. But other than that, great pitch. Um, yeah, loved it. And maybe just one little thing, like you had all these app icons there and you spoke to them, but I didn't know all of them. I've been married for nine years, so <laughs> it might not be your target audience here, but um, maybe put the names there on that, on that slide. But um, great pitch. Over to you, Chia. Shay, you're up. I thought it was a great pitch as well. There, and basically filled the gaps that I saw as well. So there wasn't there isn't too much to share. Um, I, if I understand correctly, this is not a dating app, or is it a date? It is a dating app. It's not a dating app. Okay. I was I wasn't quite sure. And when you're saying where you fit into things, you compared yourself to WhatsApp and compared yourself to the partner. So I I think I got a bit confused uh, where where you sat in there once we got to that slide. So as I understand it, you are helping couples to have sexy talk. I, I, the whole thing made me like giggle, like ooh, this is wow. <laughs> I thought that was really cool. I, yeah, I, I really love what, how you brought about the story and that you just kept going. You're like, no hesitation. This is what we're talking about. This is how it's going. So I, I definitely keep that. But what I wasn't so sure is um, dating app or not dating app. And where does that fit in? And I, I didn't think, at first I didn't think it was a dating app. But then when you put the other people, I got a little, a little lost. So maybe if you brought me back out, reiterate where you stand. I think it's a great great concept. When you talked about WhatsApp, I was a little like, oh no, what if my mom suddenly gets my picture? Is it on? That was a little confused. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I understand now. So it's good. Thank you, Elizabeth. Well done. Awesome. Yes. And there's some questions in the chat. And I'm also thinking maybe some people in there thought it was a dating app because there's questions about how do you screen people getting on the platform? What if they're sex offenders? How do you deal with that? There's a lot of questions around data privacy. So that's probably something like to talk about that, that big risk piece um, when people are sharing their data. And you may have touched on that. And I also may have missed it. And <laughs> other people obviously did miss it too, if it was in there. Um, but other than that, I think it is, it's such such a great pitch. People are saying great things in the chat. So make sure to hang out over there and answer their questions. Um, and yeah, there's, there's 
Paul talking about using a user story. There's lots going on over there. So make sure to, to head over that way. Um, in the meantime, what can we as your community do to support you and um, well, I think the biggest thing is, as I said, we're coming out of beta and we want users. So we would love to have people sign up. Um, A-M-O-R-U-S. You can find us in the App Store and Google Play. And please download, install, invite a friend, set up a chat, play some games, let us know what you think. Um, our bot, Amy, who welcomes you into the app, you know, you can always talk to us there. Anyone who wants to tell us about their experience, I would love that. I would love to talk to our users. So uh, you can also follow us on the socials and that kind of thing. But honestly, use the app. Try the app. That's what I would love. Fantastic. And head to amorous.net. And if you also want to want to head to those socials, um, you can find Amorous app on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And it is at Amorous app. And as Elizabeth mentioned, that's A-M-O-R-U-S. Amorous. Um, so thank you so much, Elizabeth, for sharing today. I think that was very tantalizing. Always fun. Thank you so much. <laughs> Isabel, over to you. Alrighty, so we're heading to picture number four. We have uh, Antoinette Adafala. Um, she is joining us from Texas, USA, and is the founder and CEO of EXP Design. Um, so some news while she's getting ready to pitch. Um, they've recently signed a contract to work with a large tech company to support them in educating their audience. So welcome to the stage. Hello, I am Antoinette, the founder and CEO of EXP Design. I don't know if you all know, but employees want more training. 74% workers say they are not reaching their full potential at work. Here's the problem. Corporations have small training teams, and they typically are responsible for providing training for their customers, their partners, and their employees without having access to their full creative team. So there's no time to learn new tools or skill sets and meet all the demands. So that typically results in a low morale and low retention rate, and that organization can, um, they make less of an impact in their society. So here's where EXP Design comes in. We provide e-learning development, instructional design consulting, and learning platform and system support, and that full creative learning team. And we can take a project from start to finish. Now there's a market for it. Now $370.3 billion is spent on employee training in 2019. $7.5 billion is spent outside on products and services. There are a lot of companies in the market, but this is what makes us different. We're bringing 20 plus industry years of learning and development and design, and we are a complete creative learning team, including UX designers and visual designers. So we utilize the instructional design framework and incorporate user experience design in our process. So we really focus on collaboration and open communications with our client. And we value inclusivity um, because we do it we value and we do it within our work and our uh, projects and within our team. Antoinette, can you please increase your volume? The people on YouTube are having a hard time hearing you. Okay. Sorry about that. Is this better? Okay. Um, and so we started the company January 2020 and been able to work for companies like Apple, Gannett, the City of Austin, the Breast Cancer Research Center, Lean Feast, and BBLA, and just create amazing case studies about what companies can do with their learning while becoming certified as a minority-owned business. So um, this is how you can help. We're looking for mentorship from owners of e-learning and creative agency, as well as business development and marketing experts, and also internet, um, introductions into your network for training managers and directors at socially conscious companies and amazing instructional designers and visual designers. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, if you want to reach out with questions or if you um, just want to connect, uh, my email is Antoinette at ESPDesign.co, and you can check out more of our case studies at ESPDesign.co. So nervous. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, Antoinette, is Antoinette's first time pitching virtually or, or completely? Uh, yeah, completely. <laughs> completely, yes. First time pitching. 
be so amazing, amazing, amazing. As Isabel said earlier, uh, you only have to do it the first time once. And um, yeah, you did a fantastic job. And I love this last slide to everyone else who I was talking about have your contact information on the last slide. We can do some people have had a little bit of hard time hearing um, over on YouTube. So that's just a point to you uh, when you're doing pitches, I guess your microphone volume needs to be turned up a bit. I, we could hear you fine in Zoom. Um, so I think it's just when it was going live. So just as a as a side note for those on Zoom, if you missed it though, um, you can always go back and just crank up the volume on your computer and listen to it back again. <laughs> um, people are saying instead they couldn't tell it was your first time pitching wouldn't have known if we hadn't said anything, but it's always worth saying because massive kudos to you. Um, Alrighty, so I'm going to head over to Shay. I'm just going, I'm just ping-ponging back and forth between you two at, at this point in time. So Shay, if you'd like to come in with the first feedback. I thought you did really well. Uh, I thought you made it very clear where you stand in the in the market and your who your competitors are competitors are and also recognizing that you're not the the only one out there. So that was really good. Um, I wasn't uh, sure about, um, what do you call it, the, um, so what I understood is you're not looking for an investment money right now, you're looking for other uh, support and help in terms of uh, mentorship and, and marketing and so forth. So I, I understand now why you're, um, there wasn't a lot about your financials on there. So that that's uh, more clear, because I put a note here, but I, you don't need to share that right now. That's not what you're looking for. Um, overall, I think this is a really great concept. I, I think what you're doing is very interesting and I don't really have a lot more feedback from that. It was good. I'm sure Anne has a lot more constructive. <laughs> Anne will have the stuff that I miss, she's gonna add in, so. <laughs> it's super hard to go second, right? Because, you know, the obvious stuff is out of the way. And it's like, what do we add? <laughs> and she was, Antoinette, you were also at two and a half minutes. So Anne and Shay, if there's anything that you do feel like she could be adding in, she has 30 seconds, which is a lot of time. So. All right. Okay, let's go. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, second what Shay just said. Um, and, and we did not realize that you were nervous and that is um, a skill, right? Usually nervous pitchers go really fast or you hear it in the voice. So well done on that. Don't worry about it. You're doing great. And I'm sure you're pitching to a lot of corporations too. So it's not actually the first time you're pitch pitching, right? Because you talk to a lot of people and talk about your business. Um, I had a little bit of a trouble. Like if I had to go to a company right now and had to tell them why they should hire you, I may not have all the details. And so um, it would have been probably good to understand a little bit more tangibly what you do. Like, is this e-learning platforms that you provide? How does that look like? Is it more like you design the training? Do you do that with video? Is it live? Is it town halls? Like, what, what is it exactly? Like, I know that space relatively well, but I couldn't pinpoint exactly who to introduce you to right now at Genentech or at Philips or at Google to, to bring you in and say, this is her unique value proposition. So perhaps work on that a little bit more so that we, we understand that and can also be your advocates going from there. And, you know, same thing um, as Shay said, uh, uh, financials are missing from my investment point of view. If that's not what you're looking for, that's great. But what I probably would want to know is a little bit about pricing and how do you sit in the market from a pricing perspective, right? Are you the high end or you do luxury um, training, e-learning uh, consultancy, or are you, are you really cheap because you do something really well at scale? And then you said a lot of words that are sort of the typical corporate world words of like, oh, inclusion and this and that and effective learning and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, how, like, I would love to hear how you do that compared to all your competitors in terms of how you deliver this training. We all know nobody takes these trainings because they're so boring. So you said user-centric and I, I get that, right? From an ideal perspective and prototype design thinking, all that. So I know you can do it, but I would love to see that. And you said case studies at the end, look at them. So perhaps bring a case study in and just show what your training looks like and what the solution looks like and why it delights the customer. So I'd love to see what the value proposition is for the customer because you teed up the problem, right? Like people don't engage, they don't have resources, the trainings suck. And so 
um, then, you know, the, the, the solution side is like, wow, you know, first time 80% of our employees took that training first time they were delighted. First time they gave us five stars for that incredible training that Antoinette's company put together. And so, and that would be a little bit of the story I would work into this pitch, especially if you're looking for BD um, introductions and that, and then maybe put some numbers into from the problem slide uh, perspective, right? You said there's all these problems, but I'd love to see the numbers behind that. How many corporations don't have time for this? Like how many people, right? Like put those numbers in and show us the sources at the bottom of the page. So we know you did your research and it's not just some anecdotal of data right like that that would be another just sort of a more structural type of thing which i think is good for anybody who's doing a pitch to add those numbers and this analysis and the research to the problem slide but great job and i love i love good e-learning so so congrats and um and please let us know how we can support you yeah absolutely so just a few, just a few notes <laughs> to go back and take, but it's a lot about just adding that context and quantification is from, is what I'm hearing. And you do have time to play with, and you're already natural at speaking. Um, you have that cadence and we want to listen or excited and engaged by you. So it's uh, you have a fantastic foundation, which is great. So um, at this point in time, what can we as your community do to support you um, and your company? So at the moment, just looking for mentors and just learning resources. I'm trying to become better. Um, and just introductions and I guess more of a connection so you can really understand what I do. <laughs> and then, um, then introductions because um, we're trying to grow our client base. Yeah. So that's it. Fantastic. Thank you so much. All right. So anyone who's interested in connecting with Antoinette um, and with EXP Design can head over to expdesign.co um, as well as you're on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Um, and it looks like it's at EXP Design underscore LLC on all of those. LinkedIn, there's a dash between the two instead of a, an underscore, but they're all kind of if you look at the XP design, um, I'm sure you'll find them on all the things. <laughs> They're all a little bit different, but um, there's lots of different ways to connect with Antoinette. So thank you so much for being here today. Congratulations on your first ever pitch. Um, I hope, I know there was some nerves there. It didn't come off that way. Um, so thank you so much for being here. It was a delight. All right, let's bring up our fifth pitcher. All right, so our fifth pitcher is um, Caroline Kamya. She is the founder of Native and joining us from Kampala, Uganda. Um, unfortunately, um, Caroline's internet isn't um, on her side today. So um, she has provided us with an audio pitch and I will be flicking through the deck. So I'm just gonna go ahead and share my screen. So bear with us is what we're saying. <laughs> but Caroline is here and will be here for the feedback. And do you have the news and such that you would normally say? Yes. So the news is, um, so oh, they have three early stage investors on board who are also their advisors. And they've also recently completed the ZD Circle Accelerator program. Who are in the chat right now, I believe. Yeah. I saw ZD Circle um, and Caroline's also joining us. The team is joining us from Kampala, Uganda. I don't know if that's exactly where Caroline is right now, but that's where the team's joining us from. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, one moment. Can you hear it? No, we can't hear. We did do a tech test on this, so it should work. Yeah, let me try again. Okay, let me just do this. Oh, technology. <laughs> <laughs> we even tried it like twice before we went live today <laughs> and it was okay. working fine. Um, we can't actually see the deck either if you were. Okay, I'll just...
Caroline is in Uganda. Thank you for clarifying that. Yes, I hope it works too. It should work. It should work. All right. One moment. Hopefully. <laughs> Can we support you in any way, Isabel? Um, I'm not sure why it isn't playing. Melanie, I'm going to send it to you. Okay. I was surprised that everybody had no issues sharing their screen today and coming through, right? So. <laughs> Great job, everybody. And I would always take the opportunity if there is a practice session to do it, especially mm -hmm. if it's on a different platform than Zoom, right? Because in half of the cases, it doesn't work. <laughs> so yeah. I think uh, whenever you have anything tricky in your, in your pitch deck, if you want to show video or things like that, like keep it simple. Try not to overburden yourself with the technical details, especially when you're already kind of nervous about the pitch, right? So those are just a few things that come to mind whenever there's mm -hmm. technical issues. And some uh, pitch competitions will cut you off, right? Will not let you go if you can't get your tech to work, so. Yep, exactly. Should Isabel, should we jump over? I know Danielle's here. Should we jump over yes. to Danielle and then we'll try to get this sorted out in the meantime? Absolutely. Okay. All let's right. Do that. So, Danielle, sorry to put you in the hot sweet seat, but if you are ready to join us, um, so Danielle is actually joining us from, hold on, let me get her video up. From Sydney. From Sydney, Australia. So, very early. Yes. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> good morning. <laughs> good evening, good afternoon. Yeah. So while Danielle is um, pulling up her slides, so Danielle is the founder and CEO of Pioneera, and um, they were recently mentioned in as a world changing idea at the Fast Company World Changing Idea Awards in two categories in health and wellness um, in the APAC region. So welcome to the stage, Danielle. Um, great. Hi, everyone. Um, as Isabel said, I'm Danielle Owen Whitford, the CEO and founder of Pioneera. But before that, I was Danielle Owen Whitford, corporate executive. I raced up the career ladder running retail networks, call centres and large scale transformation. And I loved it until I crashed. If I can get my slides to work. Oops, sorry. 20 years experience, degrees in psychology and communication, mentored by the top execs, and I didn't see the warning signs and neither did they. I later found out that this is happening all the time because I'm not alone. 80% of us feel stressed throughout our day and stress is contagious. So we're all experiencing each other's stress and we're just not seeing the warning signs. The World Health Organization is telling us that this is just getting worse. So we created a solution. Indy is the Grammarly for mental health. It connects to collaboration systems, sees early warning signs of stress and burnout in our language, and then sends you a tip in real time to help you de-stress fast. And managers, we've got you covered too. Indy also gives you a sense of your team, so you know when and where and how to help your people. And we're just in time because we sit very nicely between the global productivity market and the global wellness market. There are a lot of tools out there to help people, but people are just too overwhelmed and too stressed to make the most of them. This is where Pioneer comes in to help. And this is why companies are buying Indie. 67% say they want to understand productivity and help productivity. And 70% say that wellness is important. Their repetitive pulse surveys are not working and nudges like we deliver are twice as effective at changing behaviour. But don't take it from me. 
listen to our customers. This is from one of the big four banks we're working here in Australia. A team manager says that she has a high performing team because they're productive and achieving real outcomes by working with Indy. And the team member says that Indy can help her focus on wellness and she feels safe and private because only the individuals can access their own data. Managers get anonymized, aggregated views to protect the well-being and the privacy of the members in their team. Our business model is direct um, SaaS product to enterprise and SMEs, um, licensing and distribution through partnerships and data from our, um, our data model that we're collecting from workplaces in Australia and globally. And our traction is really starting to grow. We relaunched our new streamlined platform for SMEs in February of this year. And as you can see, month on month, we'll be bringing more and more customers onto our platform. And today we launch our version of Microsoft Office Email 365. So you can have our bot Indy in your email as well as your Slack channel. We have a pretty aggressive and we think ambitious product roadmap. We started out as an enterprise product to help enterprise. Over COVID, we realized that SMEs also needed our help. So we streamlined our product to make it fully self-service. And as I said, as of today, we have Microsoft Office Email 365, as well as Slack as our collaboration systems we can connect you to. In the future, we're looking to expand our signals from stress and wellness and burnout to other areas of organizational chaos, such as bullying and harassment and un conscious bias and will deliver our consumer app so individuals can buy our product and Indy can help them with personalized preventative help when they most need it. We have competitors in a range of spaces either in wellness or in technology and insights but we are the only organization that is delivering understanding um, insights from the early stages of passive language detection right through to delivering the nudge and the help when you most need it. We're a team of international experts in AI, psychology, and bringing technology to life in organisations. And our ask today is that we are already raising, um, but what we would really like is we would like to have some pilot customers to test this with us in the States. We're gaining momentum in Australia, and we know we're helping Australian organisations and people, and we really want to extend that globally. So if you're an organisation in the US um, or in Canada or anywhere, really, in an English-speaking country, and you have either 20 to 250 people, you have service and knowledge-based workers, in your organisation or you're really struggling with hybrid working, then please reach out to me. We would love to talk to you about how you could be one of our early US pilot customers. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Danielle, for that. Um, and thanks for joining us at so early a time in the morning for you. Uh, so I'm going to head over to Anne, if you can start us off. Yeah, great pitch, Danielle, and good morning, Australia. <laughs> um, uh, love that this was a B2B uh, solution here, right? So you can already see the differences there a little bit. Um, in terms of credibility, I think you hit it out of the ballpark, just in terms of putting all these little resources and the numbers in here to really, you know, mimic what you do with your sales process probably right as well um so so absolutely love that and i think i understood your product quite well even though i think you could pull that out a little bit more there were these small little uh, screenshots of how it works so maybe spend a little bit more time there so i really understand how it it brings up these these reminders and those things and then Love the way you brought in testimonials and perhaps um, adding some numbers to that too. I know you don't have a ton of customers yet, but how did it change and move the bottom line for those companies? And how is that um, translated into, um, you know, ROI, if you will, for those companies, right? Because it's always a little squishy, those kinds of things like ah, productivity, but how does that translate into hard numbers? And as an investor, I would want to know that. And as somebody who can introduce you to other companies as well, I uh, love the fact that you had uh, the progression of your, of your customers on that slide. So cumulative, you're growing exponentially, but it seems like you're growing the same amount each month. And so the question there would be, hmm, you know, like 
do you think you're going to grow exponentially at some point and how does that look like? And then because it's a SaaS business, would love to see some retention numbers and churn and what people, you know, how people react to this after some time. And perhaps you have really good numbers there, looks like it from your graph. So I would pull that out and really show that as well because we know people get tired of those kinds of things over time, right? Love the competitive analysis slide. I really like it when it's not just two or four dimensions, but it's actually a whole list. So I can really see how you think about it, where you differentiate, what's your unique value proposition. And the fact that you put like Thrive Global, Race 30 million, et cetera, on there tells me that, oh, okay, she's in a space that is growing and there is action here and potential for investment in the future. So yeah, I know I've, I've said a lot of different things, so I'm gonna, just going to ha hand it over to you, Shay, and uh, congrats on the pitch. Thank you. Thanks very much, Anne. So Danielle, really great job on the pitch. You were great delivery, uh, very thorough. You could definitely tell that you're, you're doing B2B, like, like Anne said. Um, I, from my perspective, I was a little curious about the, the how part. You're attaching, you're integrated into their Slack. Uh, are you also retaining information from their privacy? Or start thinking about those things. And at least it wasn't clear to me what how that was being handled. Um, and are you also looking at their, because even in Slack, you can be talking to your colleagues, but some of those conversations might be a little bit more personal. So we're, that wasn't clear to me. I also wasn't sure if you're just using Slack. I think you said there was another one, but not every company is using Slack. So what other tools or what other ways are you integrating? I, that wasn't also wasn't clear to me. Love the competitive slide. I, I, I agree with Anne when it's so clear who's doing what and including definitely showing who's getting money. It just says, where the business is. I think you also had a slide on where the business was and where, you know, how much the market is making. Very, very good and very clear about that. Um, I was a little confused because the name on all the slides is Pioneer. And then you kept saying during the presentation, Indy. And I was like, where did Indy come in? Where, I, who's Indy? What is Indy? And then Maybe you explained that in the beginning and I missed it, but it was a, a little confusing because Pioneer is on all the slides. And then yeah, maybe, maybe you cleared that up in the first slide and I missed it. But uh, no. just that came up for me on that. Um, oh yeah, ROI, that's a, uh, uh, Anne already covered that. And oh yeah, other than that, I thought it was really great. I thought, I think you have a, you know, what I wanted to say also your ask I'm a little confused, or maybe um, if you already have people in Australia, is that not enough of a business case for you to use in the US? Why do you need specifically US people to test it out as a pilot? Because to me, you already have the pilot, you already have proof of concept, you already are in that space. Why do you need more pilot customers? Why not just customer customers? Um, Thanks. Yeah, you're right, Shay. That's a very good point. I guess what we wanted to do is test because it's an English-based bot. We think um, and we expect it'll work quite well in the States, but what we wanted to do was test our ability to analyse language in the States as much as we can in Australia. But you're absolutely right. It's, you know, we have paying customers here. Um, so I guess it's no longer a pilot. It's a customer, customer, to your point. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Great job. Thank you. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, all right, so Danielle, we'd love to know, ooh, we'd love to know how can we, as your community, support you here today? Uh, well, to Shay's point, we would love to um, work with some US companies to start um, having the bot. So Shay, the Indy is the name of the bot. We sort of personalized a little bit, so forgive me for that not being clear. Um, so we'd love to work with some companies to expand us a little bit further um, and test our proprietary system in the US or, um, you know, Canadian market. That would be the first thing. Secondly, as I said, we're in the midst of a race here in Australia, which is going quite well. If there are any companies that would like to be part of that, please feel free to reach out. My contact details were on the slide and I'd love to talk to you further. Can I just say one more thing? Sure. 
I don't know how you're so alert and looking so fabulous at four in the morning, but <laughs> well done. <laughs> well done. Yes. Well done. Yes. This looks, this for 4 a.m. This looks good. 4 <laughs> uh, great job. There's also lots of people commenting in the chat over on YouTube, um, saying great presentation, strong problem solution statement asking about European users. We have a lot of Europeans in our community and how they can be part of this. But um, so thank you so much. And also if you are looking to, if you're in the audience right now and you're looking to connect with Danielle, um, you can go to pioneera.com to learn more and connect there. So thank you so much, Danielle. It was a pleasure having you here today. Um, now we did mention, I mentioned on, on uh, YouTube, but I want to mention here right now because of our technical issues in the beginning, and just now kind of trying to get through this, um, our last pitch, which we really want to show, we are going to be over by a little bit of time. So I apologize in advance. And if anyone has to, to leave us, we understand. Um, but if you can stay, it should only be about five or 10 minutes over. And we would love you to stay to be part of the voting. Um, and also because we are hoping to share about this incredible organization called Red Rescue that's um, um, working to eliminate period poverty in Ghana, so we would like to share that. But we're having some problems with our audio right now and sharing of audio. So Isabel's been working hard in the back end and it looks like it's not working from her computer very well. So, or not at all, it just, we've tested it a few times, but it's just not working. Um, so I will try, but unfortunately I've not tech tested this. So I've never done like an audio and a, and a slide at the same time. So I will um, do my best and we'll see what happens here. And if I can only get one running, Shay and Anne, would you prefer the audio? Actually, no, we have to do the audio. Are you okay with just an audio pitch if we have to? Sure. Okay. So I will try to do it another way, but I don't know. Okay. So first, and Isabel, tell me if I'm doing this wrong. <laughs> can you share two things at the same time? Oh, you can. Cool. Okay. <laughs> so nerve wracking. Okay. So I'm going to share the slides, hopefully. Oh, that's not, that's actually sharing. Oh my gosh. I haven't used PowerPoint in ages. How do I share from PowerPoint? Slide At show? the bottom. Yeah, that'll work from the beginning. From the beginning, hopefully it's not on a timer. And then where is my audio? Audio's here. Oh, but you know what? I don't know if I, okay, let me know if you can hear it. You couldn't hear that, no. could you? No. no, okay, I know exactly what I did. I'm so sorry. Okay, so fun fact, you have to click a box that says share sound, which I've now done. So we've got that, nope. Where's my music? Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> okay. Um, oh. Okay. What are you seeing right now? Nothing? Nothing. You're not seeing anything. You're not seeing anything. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Is this going to work? This is going to work. Okay, we've got music and this. Can you see the deck? Um, not yet, but I'm sure when you press play and then go to the, oh yes, yes, we can see okay, it. Okay, then let me know if you can hear this and then I'm gonna do my best to click at the right times. don't hear anything. Okay, we're gonna do an audio pitch only then. I'm so sorry, Caroline. It's, I don't know why that's not working. That should be working. Um, that's unfortunate. Okay, I'll do an audio pitch for this one. Um, you should be able to share two at the same time. I'm sorry. I think that's what we're gonna to have to do. Okay, oh, I keep shutting that down. Open that again. And let me know this time if you're gonna, if you hear it when I start it. 
My name is Caroline Kamia, and I'm yes. a filmmaker and entrepreneur with over 17 years of experience in media in Europe and Africa. Currently, if you require filming in Africa, you'll have to fly over a crew, and with COVID, flying is a slim option, or risk getting referrals via social media. One of the biggest creative communities in the world are unable to access global markets, and Native is the first of its kind, a global freelance service marketplace for top-end African creative crew and aligned media creatives, where you can buy and pay not only for their services, but also their content all in one place, saving time and money. The environment is safe, secure and mobile ready. Payment can be made by credit card and direct to smartphones preferred in Africa. Global film and video production spend in 2020 was 220 billion US dollars and in Africa 6.5 billion US dollars. So we have a sum of 0.3 billion US dollars. So Native resolves all pain points and offers more benefits than the competition who have ignored this market segment. Our revenue model is commission and subscription based with more offerings to retain our talent and build the customer loyalty. Our eight member Native partners and advisors range from a startup specialist, a legal expert, a BBC executive, and a couple of BAFTA award-winning directors and producers. We are connected to news networks and NGOs who require these services on a consistent basis. Our timeline is to start with the Ugandan market where I now reside, build region by region, capturing the African global market within five years. We are welcoming mentors to our network and also building up our client base. We already have three early stage investors on board and inviting an investment of 250,000 US dollars for operations and app development. With your support, Native is the global go-to platform. The time is now and we are ready. Okay, I'm so sorry, Caroline, but if you're able to join us now on video, um, thankfully you're a very clear speaker, so your your audio only pitch was fantastic in terms of how we could hear it, and we're going to test and shake that it is more difficult when it's a pitch and audio pitch only, but what's that? My video is turned off at the moment. I can't, um, I'll wait until I'm allowed to put my video on. Okay, uh, I think there Isabel, that's, <laughs> there you go, yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you, thank you for your patience and working with us on this. Um, we're all, we're learning still, <laughs> so thank you so much. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go over to um, Anne to begin with. Um, if you would like to provide your feedback on this audio pitch. Oh, I thought I'm second today. I'm, I was like, taking a break here. <laughs> well, Caroline, I, I know we couldn't see the slides, but congrats on a really good audio pitch. Your voice is amazing. And that uh, it was delivered really clearly. It also shows us how much the pitch slides actually help create a story and help us understand your brand just from the visual perspective, right? Like it's much harder now for me to pinpoint who you are, what you do, than if I see the slides with it. So I loved the story. I think you stitched it together nicely. I understand what you're doing. What I would love to hear more about is the traction. I know, you know, COVID has kind of created a whole another market and sensitivity to that market. Love to see what that looks like in terms of traction right now. And then you did tell us about your business model that you're charging a, you know, a percentage of that booking fee, which is very typical in that space. And so 
I would love to hear how much, right? Is it 20%, is it 10%? And then also what does that accumulate to? And how much of that $0.3 billion market are you going to, to capture in the future, especially since you're also raising investment? I know you didn't just ask for that, but um, that would be interesting to me to see that forecast. And then to also hear a little bit more about the product roadmap, like, okay, now it's a, it's a, it's a connection um, resource platform that you also mentioned you have some ideas there in the future, right? How you can make it sticky and perhaps create content for people to, to become even better resources, right? I think um, a great example is TaskRabbit that created like these courses and trainer trainer programs. And I'm sure you looked into that model a lot. And so we'd love to hear about that, but I know it's a three minute pitch and um, you can't put everything in there. But yeah, congrats and over to you, Shay. Thank you. Hi, Caroline. I think Hello, we met. Shay. Didn't yes, we? absolutely. I, I figured it out. <laughs> Amsterdam. Yes. <laughs> I it out when I looked at your profile, I was like, oh my God, I already know her. <laughs> Um, great picture ready. I agree with Anne when she said that um, the the images do help to the storytelling. But in the absence of that, I think you did do a really good job. But you know, with the audio, um, I I all the things that Anne said, I echo that as well. Um, what I wasn't sure about is what the investor gets when they give two hundred fifty thousand. Because I think at the end you said. You're looking for more investors to give 200, if they're interested to give 250,000, but yeah. uh, it wasn't clear to me what they get with that or, or where, what, yeah, what, what's happening with that, with that investment. Um, the other thing that you said was a COVID because of COVID that there was no traveling. I would like to have heard more what happens when we, you do get to travel. Is this business still sustainable or does it, the model need to change or what happens uh, because whether, I don't know if it will happen or not, but everyone's kind of hoping that we will get to travel again and that there will be a new normal or a new kind of normal way of, so where does your business fit? Because the first thing you said was that because of COVID, we can't travel anymore. So now when things open up, what happens then? Um, the other thing I, I noticed, you said that they're on the platform and I might've heard it wrong, but you said that you had eight members already on the platform. If I understood that uh, correctly. No, advisors and members. Advisors and members of the team. Oh, okay, okay. Then ignore that question. Uh, I had a quite uh, yeah. You know, Anne already brought about the booking fee. I had a question about how much is that that fee and how, how does that, how are you multiplying, scaling that? Or is it by how many people are signed up? Or what is the scale factor? Um, I'm not sure that I heard that right. And I think that's it. Anne covered any, anything else that, that I had on my list, but well done. Congratulations. Thank you, Shay. Appreciate it. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, all right, thank you again for being patient with us. But I appreciate it so much. Um, all right, so how can we as your community support you here today? Yes, uh, as I mentioned in, in the pitch, i um, looking for more mentors who can come on board who are really interested in this um, section um, in terms of African creatives, both on the continent and the diaspora, um, also angel investors, um, accelerator programs where I can learn and grow. Um, and we are beta testing, so it would be great to have some clients who we can test this out on. We've already started doing that, but with three minutes, I didn't uh, put a lot of stuff like go to market strategy and um, a little bit more info about our traction so far and our MVP. Um, but yes, I'd love to share that with people um, after this session, of course. Um, where I can go and I can share the visuals that we spent a lot of time doing <laughs> uh, that you didn't see, but it's okay. Oh, <laughs> There'll be a secret add-on. When somebody, somebody wants more info, they'll get the beautiful visuals. And yes. Come to life. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Reach out to Caroline at iamnative.com or on Instagram native at nativeplatform. Um, so 
get in touch, ask for that deck. It is beautiful. Maybe in future we can get you back again and have you pitching live or have a video recording or something. Um, sure, I can do that. That would be fantastic. I think we'd all love to see the full pitch with the deck. That would be great. But thank you so much again. I really thank appreciate you. you being here today. Thank you also. Thank you very much also for your feedback. I've taken notes and um, I'll, I'll be very happy to improve as well. Thank you. Amazing. All right, Isabel, I know that we are over time and I appreciate that and some people are leaving at this point in time. So let's get the voting up um, so we can get that going for those who are left here today. Um, everyone though that pitched here, do head over to YouTube and see what everyone's saying. Um, there's been so much activity there, which is great to see. Um, lots of questions and kudos and um, all the things over there. So thank you to everyone who's been joining us here today over on YouTube. Um, or if you're joining us after the fact and you're watching this retrospectively, thank you so much for being here and being a part of our community today. So yeah, voting is li now live. So you can head to buzzit.ca and enter in Amplify Women, or you can also use this nifty QR code that I have and vote for your top pitch. So I'll leave that up for a few seconds to get everyone in and maybe one of the Volition team members can pop it into the YouTube chat as well. So buzzit.ca and enter Amplify Women and you can go straight to the voting section um, and cast your vote. So while you are all doing that, um, I'll bring you through some of the events we have coming up in July. Um, yes, it is going to be July this week. <laughs> We're halfway through the year. Um, oh yes, thank you um, to our community partners. So <laughs> like definitely need to say thank you for them. All of these community partners have um, done a wonderful job in um, sharing about uh, today's Amplify um, with their community and their network. Um, I know that a few of the pictures, um, I believe came through them as well. Um, so thank you so much to them for, uh, for helping us get the word out to, uh, to different startups. Um, so a few upcoming events. So as we mentioned earlier on in the event, um, Melanie does um, Instagram Live Finder Chats every Tuesday or almost every Tuesday at 11.30 a.m. PST or 7.30 p.m. Uh, GMT. Um, so these are the ones we have coming up in July. Um, I believe one of them, Alexandra Beach now is a pitch alumni. And then a few of the rest we have met through um, some of our program partners. So be sure to check any of them out. Um, next, uh, next month's Amplify is a general Amplify. So there's no theme to it. And that will be July 8, uh, 28th, um, same time, 11 a.m. PST. Um, if you would like to uh, um, apply for that, um, applications are open until July 14th. Um, and then we also have a BC Women's Startup Showcase in August. And um, this is part of the Discovery Foundation's Regional Investor Readiness Program. So as part of that program, we're also doing um, pitch masterminds through a few of our partners, um, as well as some uh, startup free startup coaching as well. So if you, again, if you're interested in attending or uh, applying to pitch, that is on August 25th. So now we also have a spotlight to share. <laughs> Which will hopefully work. <laughs> yes. It, it is also audio. So Melanie, while you're pulling that up, maybe I can tell everyone a little bit about them. I don't have access to the audio. Ah, okay. Let me try that. If not, we can just tell you a little bit. Okay. Isabel's computer has just stopped wanting to share audio altogether, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not working. Even from like the link in the email. Yeah, I'm gonna go through that now. All right, well, while we're waiting for this, um, Anne and or Shay, are there any final words that you would like to share? Anne. I loved all the pitches. I think there wasn't one where I'm like, oh my God, that was really not ready. Um, 
uh, and you can see, you know, when you when you ask changes at the end, your pitch changes as well. And uh, I think we had a lot of examples today to to see what that looks like, and to be very conscious of that too, right? Always think about the audience. Always think about who is it at the other end who you're pitching and who you're trying to attract. And I know, really great job, everybody, going through the pitches, how they were delivered, the slides. Like really top notch and great choice by the Volition team to to choose you to pitch here today. And you know, if anybody would like to connect with me on LinkedIn or on the Guild, which is a free platform too, right? To just kind of get access, then please do so. I put my LinkedIn profile in the chat on um, on YouTube. And yeah, congrats, everybody. Absolutely. Shay, did you have any final words as well? Well, um, I'm going to echo Anne. Um, she said a lot of the things I want to say. I think all of you did a really great job. Um, I know it's not always easy to come out and do a pitch and be confident when you're feeling nervous inside, but all of you really didn't show any nerves, except Caroline. I could tell she was nervous. The <laughs> <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> um, but uh, there was, uh, I thought all of you did a really good job. I think knowing your audience is, is really, is really key, but I think you guys had a strong grasp of that. Um, and I think that you were able to tell a story that was compelling enough to make me want to know more. And I think that's, that's one, that's such a key part of doing the pitch. Like, even if you don't have everything, do I want to know more? And you, you've all were able to clearly state the problem, who you're talking to, what your audience, uh, well, not what your audience, um, where your market is. So I wanted to know more. And, and I think that's always strong. You, if you miss something, people can ask questions and you can fill them in. And, and that's, that's if, we don't, if they don't ask questions and something has gone wrong, <laughs> they don't want to know more. That was good. Absolutely, yes. Thank you so much, Shay and Anne. Um, now, before we share our top pitch, we did want to share about this Red Rescue organization. Unfortunately, I can't access the audio and Isabel's computer is not sharing the audio right now. So what we're going to do is tell you a little bit about them and then we're going to share um, a video clip and a little bit of information about them on our social media afterwards. Um, so make sure to be watching for that. But over to you, Isabel. Uh, yes, so this is Ron Rosamond Afanio. She is the founder of Red Rescue and they're based in Ghana. Um, and Red Rescue is looking to seek guidance in the development of their prototype um, and looking for connections to schools and shopping malls in Ghana. Um, they are helping um, with emergency, um, uh, I can't think of words now, <laughs> for a period menstruation products um, for women um, in Ghana. Um, so if you think that you can support or connect with them and um, you can go to their Instagram account, Red Rescue Inc. Um, you can also reach out to Rosamond straight away um, or directly to at redrescueinc at gmail.com. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Isabel. We will also share more about them on social media because they're doing very important work. So we'll get that information out there um, for you as well. And thank you again for being patient with us here today. So Isabel, um, are we ready to share? We are, I will slack you who is our top pitch for the day. Fantastic. Alrighty, so if everyone wants to show uh, or turn on their video, if they're comfortable and able to do so in their current internet circumstances. <laughs> hello, hello, welcome back. Hello. Great, all right, we have everyone here. Fantastic, all right. So I am, as, as Anne and Shay have said, everyone here was so incredible. I, I love everything you're working on and um, I'm so happy that we were able to see your pitches, learn more about you. We're going to continue to connect with you. Make sure to stay in contact with all of us here um, so that we can continue to share what you're doing. We're going to share about your asks on social media over the coming days to bring in more people to help you and support you. I just, I'm, I'm honored to be here. So thank you for being here today and sharing about your companies. Um, our top pitch, oh, <laughs> sorry, our top pitch um, picture of today's um, ampl Volition Amplifier, Volition Women's Amplify pitch is a 
glamorous. <laughs> Nicely done, Elizabeth. Um, yes, please feel free to say a few words if you'd like. Wow. Um, that, that is really cool. I uh, am totally unexpected because there were so many super cool ideas and I love all of the women that presented today. It was really remarkable. Um, thank you so much. I'm, I'm really, really excited um, to, to work with all of the sponsors and the things that they provided. And I just, yeah, the feedback was incredible and I learned so much just from the other pictures today. And so I'm just really, really honored to have been part of it. Thank you. And um, yep, yeah, please try Amorous. <laughs> Fantastic. Nicely done, Elizabeth. And like, nicely done, everyone, of course. And please do connect with each other as well. Because as people have been saying in the chat here in the Zoom room and on YouTube, other and, and there was lots of comments about Shay and Anne, your incredible feedback as well. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. As Isabel mentioned at the beginning, obviously, you know, we're on YouTube, but please like and subscribe and we will continue to iron out the technical difficulties and it will be smooth, smooth sailing at some point in time. I swear it will be smooth, smooth sailing. <laughs> um, and we'll keep the chat open for just a moment here. Um, put your LinkedIn profiles in there if you're still hanging out with us. Again, connect with each other. Um, and we'll see you again. We do these once monthly. So we'll have another one of these in July. Um, that will be all genders included in that one from all around the world. And Isabel will be the primary host for our July um, Amplify event. And then in August, we, as, as Isabel mentioned that, so we're not gonna have an Amplify in August. So we're gonna, we're gonna just do a BC Women's Showcase. That's BC in Canada here. It happens to be on my birthday. So if you do wanna come and celebrate with me, I wouldn't mind. Well, I made it kind of nice. I specifically chose that day because I love, love, love these women's pitch events so much. Um, thank you so much. Alrighty. So I think with no further ado, is there anything that I'm forgetting to do, Isabel? No, I think we've covered everything. Just thank you everyone so much for coming today. And again, thank you so much to all of our community partners and our wonderful panelists for um, offering your time today. It's, it's really appreciated. And to our pitchers. I'll be connecting with all of you because I'm very excited about all of your businesses. Absolutely. Feel free to come off mute and say goodbye, your goodbyes and then we'll close down the event. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs> Great Bye. job. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You. Thank you. Bye, Bye. Bye Carolyn. Cheers. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>